not even halfway through and this video is making me pretty emotional. <sighs> Hello my lovelies and welcome back to another video. I am going to answer to your questions today but this time with a little twist I will be answering to the rudest questions that I was ever asked online. I was thinking of kind of like um, asking you online Asking you on my Instagram to ask me things that you want to ask without a filter But then I thought that would be maybe like a little bit like I'm encouraging you to ask rude things and I didn't want to do that So what I did instead is I made a list of things that you ask often Well, not you, but like some people ask often But can be perceived as rude Now, what is a rude question? That could be quite a subjective like topic, like rude What's rude for some people, some people are like proud of being like blunt or brave or whatever i think like some questions can be quite intrusive in general i don't like asking questions like if you are my friend or if you know me you will know that i never ask personal questions just because maybe i'm like sometimes a little bit like awkward about people asking me questions in real life um i don't know if you know me you probably know that but that's not because it's probably because i'm a pisces and i'm a little bit too like closed and vulnerable i don't know anyway that being said what i will consider for the purpose of this video as a rude question would be anything that you wouldn't ask a person that you meet for the first time ever face to face or even a friend or even someone you've known for a while you just wouldn't ask that face to face because your parents taught you that it is a rude thing to ask well i will go by what my parents taught me and my parents are pretty strict in fact, if I went by what my parents taught me, they'd be just like, don't ask questions, people don't like questions, and yeah. Um, before I start answering the questions, everything that I'm wearing, including the jewelry, is linked below. So yeah, if you have any questions, check the description box below. So I'm not going to start in any particular order. Question number one that I get asked quite often and that I think could be considered rude is why is my jaw crooked and why do I talk the way I talk? Now the reason why I think this question could be perceived rude is that I feel like asking people things about their appearance can be kind of rude like it's like asking like oh I don't know would you ask someone why are you cross-eyed or why is your like I don't know like chin too pointy or why is your nose too big I feel like I don't know about personal appearance I think like I would never ask someone like that and it, it's not something that I would ever kind of ca it would catch my attention but if you really want to know I actually have like a very crooked jaw I've always had that the only way that that can be fixed would be surgically in fact when I was young I had to spend so much time at the speech therapist because I could not pronounce properly S Z and C I'm still kind of like I mean I, I went for like a very very long time to to have these kind of like speech therapist lessons and I remember them actually very well because I was like six seven and eight when I was attending these lessons it took a while to kind of be able to pronounce these letters at all but it left me with like crooking my jaw when I speak because in order to pronounce those letters I have to close my jaw and in order to close it I have to kind of like like twist it so yeah I do get that a lot so my face is completely asymmetrical uh, one of my half of my face is more lifted than the other my lips are asymmetrical my jaw is asymmetrical and in fact I'll insert a picture of me when I was a child because I get a lot of questions from people saying like oh you your face with plastic surgery uh, like look what you've done your face now looks like this this is all because of plastic surgery too much Botox uh, left you like you can't move half of your face did you have a stroke um, yeah a lot of kind of suggestions like this luckily like I mean maybe if I'm very tired or if I'm having like a bad day it would get to me but I feel like any everyone has like some kind of like physical insecurities and these are fine it's something that I can't really change and it's something that it's always been that way and I can't really change the fact that my jaw like is asymmetric that my face is not perfect 
and it's just gonna stay that way so I'm very sorry if it bothers some of you. Another kind of similar along those lines questions since I was already talking about plastic surgeries and Botox would be like why do you use so much Botox, why is your face so plastic and why do you look that way? Now um, one thing that I feel like should just kind of be like like out of the air that I do not have Botox in my face and I can prove it. Look, watch me. Can you see those lines? Basically when you have Botox you cannot move your forehead, you cannot frown and you cannot lift your... well we can probably lift your eyebrows a little bit but you cannot create lines because the whole point of Botox is to paralyze your forehead, to paralyze this bit here and you can't like squint like to create these kind of like frown lines so yeah there was a little proof that I do not use Botox or cheek implants or cheek fillers. I've never had cheek fillers again. Pictures from childhood. I've always, always, always had like really, really, really <laughs> not like chubby cheeks. Like I was always quite skinny, but my cheeks were always kind of like, I don't know, like just like this bit here was always really squishy, my mom said. And never really noticed it until I was in high school and one of my friends always used to say like oh my god Tamara's cheeks, Tamara's cheeks. I was already at this point like 15, 16 and I was like why is he like always talking to me like in baby voice and like grabbing my cheeks? That's when I kind of realized that my cheeks are a bit like meaty. <laughs> when it comes to fillers I have had my lips filled before always 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 with hyaluronic acid and never with permanent fillers. I would never recommend anyone getting permanent fillers in their lips. I think I've had my lips done last time in October 2015, no, 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 16. I know it's like not two years ago, but more than a year ago. So October 2016 was the last time I've had my lips filled and I don't intend to fill them anymore. I feel like it's so over, like the whole like super plump lip look is over and as soon as my filler expires, it will be over. I'm not going to be using it again. I don't have anything against lip fillers, cheek fillers, Botox, go for it! Like I use a lot of, a lot of um, kind of like help when it comes to like facials and scrubs and if there was something like peelings like and face treatments and like rejuvenation treatments, all sorts of things, if I had like any kind of like super pronounced like frown lines or forehead lines, I would totally go for Botox, why not? Like there's nothing wrong with it, but I have not had Botox that... Botox that... Da, 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 da. I don't have Botox in my forehead as I have shown you before. Um, I think there was one more thing that I wanted to talk to you about there. Oh, probably like my nose surgery, but I've already kind of discussed that in a separate video, so I don't know if anyone wants to know about that, but I have had deviated septum, which was fixed, and it's worse than ever before I cannot breathe at all, probably because I was not calm after my surgery. I've also had like, well actually like my nose was supposed to be fixed at the same time, but it wasn't. Mm, I was kind of like a wuss about it. It's a long story, but this video will be way too long because there's a lot of rude questions. So let's move on swiftly. Along the similar lines of physical appearance, I have to say that a question that I started recently getting a lot was what is that weird thing on your chest? Is it like, um, again, a botched boob job? Like what happened to you? Is it like a huge giant spot? Oh my god, you have chest acne? Yeah, like really really weird stuff. Like I think the bone started being more pronounced since I lost weight. I lost around I think 8 to 9 kilos recently so it's like my kind of like this is the part of my body that never like holds any weight like top part of my body my stomach my chest and my arms like most of the weight is around my hips so um the bone here became more pronounced now i was talking to my dad today and i was like as a child everything that could have gone wrong with me went wrong like in terms of development like physical development and um yeah actually this bone like started, I don't know if it's like protruding or it's going in, but I think it's protruding because you can really feel it. Um, it's something that I've always had since a teen, so I never ever ever felt bad about it. I had to wear this like huge like heavy like machinery on my body because my parents paid so much money to this doctor when I was like maybe, definitely in elementary school, maybe like I was... 11 and I had to wear this heavy like metal kind of like um, waist thing underneath like every t-shirt 
and it was supposed to push the bone inside but like obviously it didn't really work like I had so many issues and none of these like things that my parents paid money for worked um, never really gave me any like any issues I remember the doctor clearly saying like oh you know it's not gonna be too obvious it's not like a like kind of severe case of like the chest deformation so when like her boobs grow because I was still like pre teenage year when her breasts grow it won't be so obvious but I guess cleavage is always gonna be obvious so I don't know um, I never ever ever thought about this bone or felt like it was an issue or felt like it was something that is going to give me insecurity until one day I was with my ex ex-boyfriend now in Vegas and I was wearing I never wear cleavage right so I was wearing like a kind of um, really really close play suit with a bit of a cleavage I'll try and find the picture maybe if I can find it and then when we were coming back to the hotel, we were in Vegas and my ex-boyfriend told me like, oh, everyone's staring at your cleavage. It's because you have this weird bone here. And then I thought that was kind of not so nice thing to say. But it's the first time that I actually thought about that bone ever. And I was already like 25 probably. Okay, my battery on the camera died. So I'm not sure if the frame is completely messed up now that um, I had to jump out and change the battery. But yeah, I'm back chatting to you guys. So, I think that pretty much covers most of the physical appearance. Rude questions that I get. Um, there was another one that it's not so physical, it's more like mental health related. And since I've lost weight recently, I got asked so, so much if I suffered from eating disorder, if I got an eating disorder, if I should, like, that I should watch an eating disorder, if I'm throwing up after I eat. And first of all, I would say, Eating disorders are just not something that you should ever, ever, ever imply on anyone and ask people about them. I just feel like it's a very personal, personal issue. Like, there's a lot of speculations, like, and I get a lot of comments that, like, if I'm bulimic, if I'm anorexic, if I was as a teen, here's one thing. First of all, I have a big, big issue with throwing up. So, I don't remember last time I've thrown up and I feel like in my life I have probably thrown up three times. I remember it very well. Once it was when my aunt made these, like, beef burgers. I ate way too many and was very sick. Another time is when I overate with watermelon when I was five. Funnily enough, her husband bought it and brought it home when I was sick. And third time was when I first and last time got um, drunk. Never again, again. <laughs> so basically, um, not very ladylike and not very my style. But anyway, we've all been there, I guess. I do not like throwing up. It's not like... I would say like it's a metaphobia, it's again like kind of like a mental like an issue that I just don't enjoy um, throwing up so when people ask me like and accuse me of like being bulimic as a teen it kind of like annoys me because I'm like you don't really know where I come from and like how bad I deal with like these kind of things so definitely no and when it comes to anorexia again no the only like mental condition that I've suffered with was a mild mild um, anxiety when I was going from university and from my pre-reg time to like work life it was actually pretty bad um, but apparently it's like mild anxiety it was pretty bad in my head and like huge and I thought I was dying every single day but according to my doctor it was just mild anxiety and it was very normal for that age and that's the only kind of like thing that I um, um, can cope with as a teenager I do ha I did have a phase when I struggled with eating and that's kind of difficult to explain because if you don't know me very well it would be quite difficult to understand now this video is getting very very deep and very open and for me to put my life out there on a camera it's like I like I don't know what you guys will think about it and I'm a little bit scared because I feel like I'm naked now like I've told you like so many of the things that make me feel like I'm naked but basically, um, I went through a phase when I like struggled in life with myself because I'm very, very vulnerable. I'm a typical Pisces, very emotional, not insecure, funnily enough. Like, I've never been insecure. I've always been like, I'll be fine, but very emotional and almost a little bit like when someone hurts me and when someone like says something bad to me, I like almost 
like to like suffer like and spend time in that pain and make it even bigger in my head I always make these like things like huge problems in my head and then I like suffer through them as a teenager I did that like I had like issues when my parents divorced I took that really hard I never wanted to admit that to anybody even though I was really young I really really like I, I would still get upset for like a long time afterwards my parents got my parents got divorced because I really wanted that to be I really didn't want that to be the case and it, it's just like that this topic is always so difficult for me um, to talk about <sighs> but anyway I like from this like really sensitive emotional person that like had so many issues as a child I managed to develop like thick skin. I was really bullied in especially elementary school and especially between ages of 11 and 14 was pretty badly bullied because my family moved from Bosnia to Serbia so my I was pretty much bullied um, about my origins and then kind of like a racial I guess or national bullying because these countries were like in conflict before um, but yeah, like I managed to like at this time like it was very difficult for me. I was trying to get like attention but not get the attention. So long story short, I did go through a phase where I struggled with food but I was never ever ever anorexic. I mean I would admit that if I was because I feel like it's something that everyone should pay attention to. I would hate 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 to promote any kind of eating disorders or anything like that. It's something that people need to speak about, such as bullying, such as people being like mistreated um, and like things like bottling up emotions is what I do and it's the worst thing you could do for yourself. I used to not tell my parents that I was struggling um, in terms of like bullying, that like people would be like throwing things at me in school, that I, I was just like always coming home like super smiley but actually like I really suffered inside and that's something that I don't recommend. I think you should always speak to someone, like speak to your favorite teacher or your best friend or your parent, your aunt, your cousin, your neighbor, just tell someone that you can tell because honestly like I know my channel doesn't really have that much younger audience but no matter what age you are, even like bullying at work, bullying by your partner, toxic relationships, just things that um, we should really talk about I really would like to kind of like film this video and hopefully it'll inspire at least one of you to change something about their life. I just wanted as well to address upon the fact that I never spoke about like plastic surgery or fillers or Botox and things like that on my channel is because I don't want to promote those kind of things. I don't want to promote like getting lip fillers. I don't want to promote like getting Botox, getting a nose job, getting this or that. I just feel like people should not be promoting these things and I don't think the standard I should be bragging about like this is the procedure that I got because then everyone that watches it's becoming a norm you know it's becoming a norm that everyone's getting the surgery or filler or Botox etc etc and I think that shouldn't really be becoming a norm. I don't want to inspire people to get surgeries. I want to inspire people like what to buy, which product to use, what book to read. I want to inspire people to get education, to go live abroad, to get out of their comfort zone. I want to inspire people with different things, not with like plastic surgeries and procedures, which is why I don't want to address those things that much in the videos. Let me know if that makes sense in the description box below. Um, another rude question that I frequently get would be if it's true that my family is involved in like criminal activities, mafia, and where do I get money from? I guess like it's quite a common question like where do you get money from? Especially in Balkans where I come from, I get so annoyed. when Like when I see a girl that ha like wears expensive bag, has expensive shoes, has like a lot of nice jewelry, a nice watch, and people ask where is she getting money from? I get so annoyed by that question because I'm always like it's none of your business where someone gets their money from and what really annoys me a lot especially for back home it's usually either like oh it's mafia or it's like oh prostitution or something like that likely for me the latter one was never the case because people always knew that I went from one three-year-old relationship to another three-year-old relationship to another three-year-old relationship so I was never really single and stuff like that 
but um, I like of course things get to me I've had so many comments on my blog like so many comments on my youtube channel like oh why don't you tell everybody what do your parents do so in this video I'm going to tell you what my parents really do now my well actually everything they've ever done they've done together my parents met at university they're both pharmacists and they met a long time ago um, while studying. Uh, after graduating, my dad went to China to do his master's. He lived there over two years. He lived in Te he lived in Beijing and in in, 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 in in somewhere else. He's gonna kill me now. Anyway, um, as kind of he was finishing his master's, he decided that he's going to study more like traditional Chinese medicine and he will bring home back to Yugoslavia at the time. Um, so this is like prior to 92, this was like in 80 something. Uh, he will bring back to Yugoslavia uh, Chinese specialists in acupuncture. He also studied acupuncture and he was able to perform it. So he was completely fluent in Mandarin, Russian and Yugoslavian or Serbo Croatian at the time. So this is what he's done. My father and my mother together opened the first private hospital of Yugoslavia. And this is a huge country at the time. So this is Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Macedonia, Montenegro, and I don't think I've forgotten anything. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty like um, huge country and my parents owned the first private hospital of Yugoslavia. So they've done, they performed acupuncture, several massages, different things, and they were curing people because such a thing did not exist. Um, in Yugoslavia at the time, especially not like Chinese traditional medicine. They're, like my parents were making like, yeah, a lot of money, I know, and it's like a rude thing to ask, like where did you get money from or to talk about money. But since this is the video about rude questions, here it is. Um, and then what happened? My dad decided to open another hospital in Serbia, like part of Yugoslavia. So he moved to Novi Sad where he brought some more Chinese people, opened another center, but the war started and my family was split. So my dad was in another part of Yugoslavia and my sister and my mother and I were in Sarajevo, which is now located in Bosnia and Herzegovina. My dad was in Novi Sad, which is now in Serbia, northern part of Serbia. So this was kind of difficult because we wanted to obviously be reunited and uh, my family actually lost everything in war. Um, but they had some initial capital because my dad had already moved to Novi Sad to build new stuff. So they had already capital, uh, like they were already building stuff. So my dad quickly said that he has to start some kind of business. It took a long time to start another hospital. So he opened a pharmacy in Novi Sad. After that pharmacy, they opened another and pharmacy and as well acupuncture center. And then they opened another pharmacy. Then that pharmacy got robbed. Uh, then we closed that pharmacy because it was just not really like safe. The times were getting very difficult. My family saved a lot of people from the war and mainly children of our friends. So this war was kind of between three different nations. I would say between Bosniaks, between Serbs and Croatians. And my family saved children of their friends and brought them all to Serbia to Novi Sad from all three groups. So we had in our house well, in a very small flat, all of a sudden there was nine of us living and there were like some Bosnian people, Croatian people and Serbian people. I was three years old and I remember sleeping with my mom, dad, sister and myself in one double bed um, because there were so many of us and we had to feed so many mouth, dress so many people, school so many kids from all of our friends. So um, I remember this actually very, very well and I remember like it was a very difficult time but my parents were like we need to like feed these people, we need to survive, we have children. So my parents were opening pharmacies, then my dad opened another pharmacy in Macedonia. Then they went into wholesale of medicines, so because my dad was constantly getting educated. My mom started working with like more other stuff, like so it went very, very like soon we had many employees and my parents always always like were very hard working, which it's kind of good and bad, bad because I didn't really see them much while growing up. I know they will get angry about me saying that, but good because they provided me with school. I never had more than I feel like should have, but they always provided me with good quality clothing, 
with like all the books, education, like learning English, private lessons and that's something that I'm very very grateful for. So that is where my family money comes from. However, I don't think that has anything to do with me because I, I don't know how many years now I haven't touched any family money at all. I feel like probably when I graduated from pharmacy. So in 2011, which is seven years ago, I graduated from pharmacy, I started working as a pre-reg, which would give you some salary, like every month you would get a salary as like a kind of a pharmacist that is only learning to like register um, as a pharmacist. So like you're like a pharmacy student that's graduated, but you're not a pharmacist yet. And you would get like a salary around 1,000, I don't know, like 300 pounds at the time or something like that a month. And that was what I started from, it was enough for me and I never asked any money from my parents. In fact, I had a deal with my parents when I started uni. For the first six months I had my dad's visa. And I actually spoke to my dad about this yesterday. He said that I never spend that much but I felt like I was spending so much. Probably because I was young, I don't know. But I was buying like, you know, a new bed, all the books for uni, like all the furniture, blah blah blah. And at one point, so I moved to England in September and in December I realized that I'm like spending way too much, that this card is almost like my worst enemy because it was giving me stress. Every time I would swipe it through I was like, yeah, new boots, but I was like, oh my god, my dad sees that I'm like spending all of his money like this, like I was feeling really really guilty, so I asked them to stop giving me any pocket money to just pay for my school and my accommodation and that I will work for my pocket money. That's what I did. I had five different jobs in uni and that really like made me kind of more grateful for things that I own and I don't know, like remembering those beginnings makes me feel very different about everything. Oh, I think there's one more rude question. Well, I think it's a rude question. And that is, when will you stop living with your sister? And the answer is never, if you ask me and if you ask her, because my sister is my best friend. If you have a sister, you know what it's like. So if I would leave this house, I would move somewhere else, but I'm pretty sure my sister would follow me and we will still live together because that's how attached we are. Um, we're best friends and we've always wanted to live together. Like, you know, I, I don't know, like, if I live upstairs and she lives downstairs, it doesn't really make any difference to us. Also, like, a lot of people kind of rudely perceive it as that I am, like, squatting in her house or, like, sleeping in the attic of her house, which is not really the case at all. It's more like we're best friends who decided that we will co-join and live together and that is basically how we like it, especially because I travel so much. So if I lived like somewhere else, it would just make no sense because I would never see my best friend and my Stefan, my favorite nephew in the whole entire world. Anyway, so that was basically it. I think I covered all of your rude questions and if I didn't, don't let me know because it's just rude to ask rude things. <laughs> just kidding. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, that it was a little bit more informative, a little bit entertaining and that it kind of like revealed some things. I am going to try and film more chatty videos if you would like to see more chatty videos. But until then, please subscribe and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye guys!